Hey everybody, welcome to the Sunset Studio. I mean, if you've been here for a minute, you've already been here, but we are about to head back to our New York apartment. And so I wanted to show you guys what I've done up here in the little peaked treetop sewing studio that I've had the great, great fortune to be sewing in for a couple of months. Well, actually, it's been a little less than a couple of months because it took me a good couple of months to get this set up. So I really am proud of it and I want to show you because it's, you know, my channel and I'm going to show you things that I'm proud of. These sunset hues were not what was rocking this space. This little peaked topper of Rob's mom's house was actually quite green, a little pistachio, a little soft sage, which is lovely and quite calming, but not so great for upbeat sewing videos. Also really not great for the complexion on camera per se. And so I convinced Mama Rob to let me paint this several shades of coral. It shows up quite pink on videos, but it's actually in real life flora and fauna on the trim and modern coral on the base and a little bit of gold accent because gold. So I chose two coral hues that are complementary to the green that already exists in the house. These are almost opposite each other on the color wheel. So when you do see the green of the outside, when you do look through, somehow it works. At least I think it works. Works on the color wheel, works for me. I love it up here. There are windows on all four sides of the room and some of them are triangular, which makes it ever so dramatic when I pull back for a wide shot. And up here, I can actually just journey up the ladder, sew all day long, shut the door, and journey back down. I don't have to worry about moving the equipment around. I don't have to worry about cleanup. Although to be honest with you, I really do worry about cleanup like all the time. I kind of can't stand sewing in a messy space or leaving a space messy. I go to bed and I just think about it and just sits on my head, just like a little, like a little monkey, just sits on my head going, why didn't you clean up your stuff? Hey, cheap, cheap. I don't know what monkeys, what do monkeys say? I haven't had as much sewing output as I thought I would have when we uh, journeyed down south. I brought a whole lot of fabric with me and a whole lot of fabrics coming back uncut. I did manage to make a little cute crop set, which you can uh, see right here. And I also managed to make a gigantic gathered maxi skirt, which you can see right here. And a very dramatic Vogue open robe, which you can see right here. I think I've gotten all corners of the screen. What I really wanted in this space, which we don't quite have the space for yet in New York, is a sewing table, a waist height sewing and pressing table. That's some real estate that I've got to figure out back in the Cité. I actually jigsawed this table out of several things. I've got some little risers underneath the table to lift it up. And my guys at Lowe's cut me up a piece of particle board for $5. It was just sitting on a cart and they said, you know what, we don't know how much that costs. Why don't you take it for $5? And I said, yes, please and thank you. And they cut it with the coolest machine ever. I have footage of that. Here it is. Right? I got some cotton batting and I encased the particle board in that cotton batting, staple gunned that jammy down, and then staple gun some lightweight cotton over the whole shebang. Instant pressing board. It's actually held up pretty well. I'm trying not to go too maniacal on it with my pressing, but so far, so good. Underneath my sewing table is a secret. I actually use what lies beneath for any manner of things that I need to hide while I'm filming videos for you guys. If Rob and I are up here doing a talking head video and just sort of 
doing some techniques with you guys. It's kind of easy to keep the clutter to a minimum. I'm shoving all of that right under the table just so that it's out of the way until the video's done and I want to curl up in a ball and go to sleep for four hours, but instead I clean the sewing room because I don't want the monkey on my head all night long. This is the Singer Featherweight 221. This is the first machine that I ever stitched on. All she does is a straight stitch, that's it. But it's an even, beautiful, straight stitch. And really, that's what your machine needs to do. If your machine has one job, it's to do an even, beautiful, straight stitch because you can fully make everything from a little skirt to a full-on gown to a tailored suit with a single straight stitch. You don't need 65 embroidery stitches in your machine to do the dishes for you. And well, I would love for my machines to do the dishes for me, actually. Maybe cook a couple of meals, but that's also what Rob does. So at least the meals part. She is staying here in Fayetteville. She is not coming with, but I will be back and um, I will show you more of this vintage beauty. This is the machine that I actually love to recommend to beginners who are just getting into sewing and also to sewists who have been doing it a while and just want a little workhorse that can get through tough materials but that can also handle slippery thin fabrics like the little twin set I made last week. I already linked that for you. I'll link that below. Let me do an aside about um, the purchased items in here. A lot of these items were purchased at the Walmart. Some of them were thrifted. Some of them come from TJ Maxx. This little room has a teeny hobbit sized door. So already made furniture of a certain size is not really getting up here. That's not happening unless we figure out a rope and pulley system on the outside of the house and I'm not willing to go that far. So I went to the Walmart, I went to the TJ Maxx, I went to the thrift store as well. The chair I'm sitting on right now was thrifted at my favorite Fayetteville Vintage thrift store, 410 Vintage. If y'all are in town, if you're ever in Fayetteville, run to 410 Vintage. They have uh, the best stuff. And that reminds me, I never got to my vintage clothing store, Cheap Thrills. How did I never get there? Maybe, maybe I did get there maybe through the magic of YouTube. We'll just have to wait and see. At the moment, I didn't get there before we left. Fingers crossed, some miracle happened and I got to do everything that I wanted to do before we left Fayetteville in, I don't know, like the 24 hours that we have left. This right here is my mirror situation. I'm actually still trying to figure out how to get the right angle so you guys can see fitting tips. But she was crafted with tons of flowers from the Dallas stove and some thrifted rope lighting. The mirror itself was from Walmart. So once again, Walmart to the rescue. I adore it. I wish I could put it in a suitcase and take it with me like most of the things in the Sunset Studio, like the entirety of the Sunset Studio, just put it in the suitcase and take it to New York. Sometimes we need some curtains. Sometimes it's just a little bit too bright. And so I chose this Kate Spade fabric from the Madame Joannes. They just had some Kate Spade lying around. Smell them. The Joannes up by the mall, 10 stars. Lovely people, love them. Can't wait to come back, talk with them some more. Very lovely people in that Joannes. I might have given them a bad review because I went in one day a couple months ago and I couldn't find any apparel fabric and I thought the Joannes was getting rid of apparel fabric. They were just restocking. So, you know, sometimes people get mad and they give people three stars. 10 stars, 10 stars I give you now, Joannes. The apparel fabric really is picking up at the Joannes in Fayetteville. Go check it out. 
Well, I think that's what I've got for you today. You know, Rob is downstairs actually sous vide some pork chops, so we're not gonna bother him. We're not gonna make him climb the ladder, come on up here and do a little outro of this video with me because he's cooking pork chops. That's more important, folks. I'm sorry, he loves you, but he's cooking me some pork chops. We don't wanna disturb that. We'll see you in New York, the two of us with some drinks, maybe a cup of sojo. It's high time we answered some questions that have been piling up. And if you made it through to the end of this video, congratulations and thank you. I appreciate you. If you wanna throw us a like or a subscribe, come on and do so. We do some really fun things around here and just generally have a very good time. And you know what? We all need a good time every now and then, don't we? Peace out, everybody. Emphasis on a piece. I'm gonna go start packing up because a lot of this fabric is coming with me. Rambo the sewing cat does come to visit occasionally, but I'll tell you what, and uh, this is interesting, Rambo prefers to be up in the sewing studio when Rob is up in the sewing studio. I'm a cat person, he could be getting a lot of love from me, but you know, listen, whatever Rambo, I'm up here, you could come up. Wow.